Hi, this is Father Louis Skurdy. We're in the dining room with that beautiful painting. We haven't gotten the provenance on it yet, but I think it's, it's a very important painting and very familiar. It looks 19th century, but it's very beautiful in the Blake family. Anyway, uh, we're here at St. John de Pomacine uh, Church Rectory, and my guest today is Mark Paco, and Mark is the organist here and the director of music here at the church. St. John de Pomacine, First Avenue, 66th Street in Manhattan. One of those great old churches, it's beautiful. And the music is equally beautiful. Thank you, Mark, for joining us again. Thank you. Okay, um, in the first episode, we traced your uh, original interest in music. You went to, um, you came from Pennsylvania and then eventually made your way to Rome and other places, Germany, and now you're a teenager and you're back in the United States. Yes. Okay, where do we go with that? So. Uh, I did my undergrad at Duquesne University in Pittsburgh. Oh, good. Uh, they have a, a great uh, sacred music program and organ program. Now, were you Catholic yet? No, but I began RCIA, RCIA in my freshman year, and I became Catholic of in high school. my soft, in college. Wow, interesting. Good, good. Those are good years. Um, as campus minister, I, I know the significance of those years. Kids making those decisions, that is great, great. They're, they're well enough, informed, they know where they are in life, great day to choose. I, I always like to think that I, I took a five-year discernment since my first trip to Assisi. So, and my confirmation name was Francis. Oh, great, 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 love the Franciscans, great. So, uh, four years at Duquesne, uh, sacred music, organ performance, um, during spring breaks and, and other off times, I was able to return to Europe and uh, see more organs and... and uh, uh, so you had frequent contact with Europe? Yes. Interesting. Yeah, whether, I know that's going to affect you later on because we know some of the more recent visits. Yeah, whether they were music-related trips or uh, fun trips that I included music, yeah, uh, yeah, like yeah. seeing organs or making contacts. And you were, you were a college kid and yet you're expanding your areas of interest and, and your contacts in Europe. Yes. Beautiful. Uh, so one composer that I became very interested in during those years was Peter Eben, who uh, is a Czech, uh, Prague-based composer. Okay. And so I began correspondence with him. And long story short, the, the person in the United States who is one of the leading authorities on his music, his organ music in particular, mm. uh, was a woman is a woman by the name of Jeanette Fischel. And she was teaching at the time at a university in North Carolina. And it was Peter Eben who suggested that I get in touch with her. Mm. And uh, so the next chapter was doing graduate studies at East Carolina University in North Carolina. From Duquesne? To North Carolina. North Carolina. And um, I, I fell in love with North Carolina. It was like my second home. Oh, isn't that great? I was it's only beautiful. there about three years, but... Um, uh, it expanded my horizons. Oh, that's and great. I no longer took my laundry home on the weekends to have mom <laughs> do it. You learned how to use the, a washer machine. Yeah, I had to grow up. I have yet to do that, but that's another story. <laughs> <laughs> that's great. Wonderful. So you live there and you studied under her direction? Yes. Um, it was about three years. And also during that time, I, I did a, a summer study at the Oundle uh, Academy in England. And... Um, out of that, uh, the, the, I, I, I'm guessing there were maybe 20 students, mm -hmm. but there were recital prizes awarded at the end of the week. And uh, I think I was 20 or 21 at the time. And um, I was awarded St. Paul's Cathedral in London, St. Mary's in Edinburgh, and Chichester. God in bless West you, really? Now, what, what did that award mean? It meant that uh, the following summer, I would come back and do recitals in those three in places. Those three Recitals, yes. So performances, yes. So that was officially my uh, European debut. Absolutely wonderful. Uh, how many in the graduate program uh, students were church organist majors, or whatever the title would be? Uh, Sacred at, music majors. at Duquesne. I believe at the time we had about fifteen. Okay, small. Uh, when I went to East Carolina, there were maybe seven or eight. Uh, which was a, a small program in general, but if you compare that to programs today, a lot of those programs uh, may not be as, as thriving. Um, 
And then after East Carolina, I went to Eastman School of Music, which is one of the largest mm. programs in the country. Right. And I believe at the time there were maybe 35 organ majors. And so, what degree did you work for? So that, that was for the Doctor of Musical Arts, uh, which I did all of the coursework and some of the requirements, but the, the end process, uh, uh, life goes on and I took a job and uh, spent several years trying to complete the last requirements, but in the end, uh, it's not uncommon to, uh, to not finish. But I'm, ABD, you know, all the I, dissertation I'm, I'm or whatever. Lucky Musical that relation. I had the experience and, and the education nonetheless. Yeah, absolutely. So you're, you're a doctor of music, ABD, or but <laughs> whatever the D would be, yeah. dissertation or... Yeah. Uh, now, you've been performing several places since, um, I don't want to use the correct vocabulary, um, you don't perform. Yeah. You give concert. Okay. You yeah, call it I, I would call it performances. Okay. Um, I've done a lot of choral accompanying and solo recitals, and uh, some collaborative things. But uh, mm. um, even if, since my early years, uh, maybe with St. Paul's being the first concert, right? Um, I've been able to travel and perform in places like China, Australia. Uh, how, how do these get booked? Well, it's it's mostly networking. Um, Word of mouth. <laughs> yeah, being in the right place, I guess, knowing the right people. Yeah. Uh, and the network is small. Yeah. I mean, this is specifically sacred music, organ music. One thing that my uh, organ professor, David Higgs, always said was that 95% of the time, organists will always be hired by other organists. So it's it's really true. Appreciation, because, networking. Uh, yeah, yeah. Because it's a it's a... A small crop, I suppose. Right, and, and, right, right. You know, there's there's thousands of pianists, but not so many organists. You just casually mentioned uh, that the number of sacred music organists uh, is less so now. W yeah, why is I that? believe. Well, I think it's in line with many of the trends over the past couple decades, where uh, church attendance has dropped off, or mm. uh, identity with a faith, or attendance at mass, for example. Mm, uh, mm, those mm. trends all point to lower. Uh, trajectories, I suppose. Right. Uh, I'm not an authority, but no, no, uh, you give me opinion. But uh, I would say the education of sacred musicians and the kind of professionals that are coming out today are better equipped and at a higher level uh, uh, in general. Um, but let's say in 1995, if there were 500 organ majors in the country, today it. I'm guessing it's it's probably around 300 mm, okay. 350 so it's a, it's a smaller number right right and and the, the the skill is so specific I mean it's you know church organs and you've played at major churches this is wild yeah how did you get involved here at st. John's uh, in 2009 I was uh, in the market for a job. <laughs> and um, the position at St. Malachy's, the Actors Chapel near Times Square, yes, yes. Uh, was open. And that's when I first met Father Richard Baker. Oh, that's, he's the pastor here at St. John the Palmacine. And so I started wa uh, working with Father Richard Baker uh, in 2009. And then, uh, as prescribed, his, his terms came to an end in 2015. Yeah. And he was named pastor here at St. John and St. Oh, Francis. Yeah. And not, not to interrupt you, but Saint um, Father John, ne Father John, uh, Father Richard Napoleon. Oh, I'm really tongue, tongue talks today. Father Richard Baker, pastor here, was pastor at Saint Malachy's, which is the Actors Chapel. And if you go online, we have interviews with Father Baker, Richard Baker. Okay. So uh, after he was assigned here, um, uh, he gave me um, an opportunity to consider. Wow. And about a year later, I made the transition and came over here to begin my new ministry. Yeah. Uh, I, I've been to that church a few times, but I've never, never for a service. I don't know what the sound system is like and the music. Uh, uh, is the organ there comparable to what we have here? Or? There, there are two very different instruments, okay. but the, the acoustic and architecture at St. Malachy's is quite unique. Uh, it's a very tall room. Um, but it's not very large. It's very intimate, mm -hmm. uh, but the acoustic is wonderful. The pipe organ there was installed uh, in 2012, oh, and it's a nice. much larger instrument than the one we have here, but um, it has a lot more colors and a lot, uh, a lot more pipes. 
Uh, it doesn't necessarily mean it's louder. What does colors mean? Uh, flute stops, diapason stops, reed stops, uh, okay. lots of choices. Good, good, new language for me. So if, if that organ has 43 ranks of pipes, uh, the organ here at St. John has 21 ranks of pipes, but the, the acoustic here is so grand mm. um, that those 21 ranks voiced in a different way uh, sound much larger than they really are, mm. or much more embracing, I suppose. You know, during Mass, when you're up there, sometimes it's just a few people with you, you're quiet, not the whole quiet, but a few people, and it sounds like it, it, it's 50 people and, and a magnificent organ. I mean, you really yeah. get your money's the, worth out of the, it. The best instrument here is the room. The, the room makes the organ, the room makes the voices, the room makes the instruments uh, mm, sound mm, as mm. glorious as the spaces. Right, right. Church is sort of Romanesque, you'll see online, Romanesque, uh, a lot of stone, but that's really great. I mean, you really... So you've been here since two? 2016. 16, okay, good, good. So you just started your career here. I, well, I'm entering into my fourth year, so or my fourth season, I suppose. That's great. We're going to stop here for the interview. And eventually, at the end of these interviews, you're going to hear performance of Mark, by Mark, up at the organ loft. We didn't do the interviews in the organ loft because, as Mike, Mark is saying, the church is so mammoth, we were to sound like this. So we don't want to sound like this. So Father Baker invited us to use the, the dining room. Uh, this is the second interview with Mark, and we're going to go third, fourth, and fifth. Who knows? Thank you, Mark. I appreciate Thank it. Thank you, Father. Mark Peco. Director of Music here at St. John Nepomucene and a member of the Archdiocese of Newark Music and New York Music Commission. And this is Father Louis Skurdy with Mark. Let me hear from you, Father Louis Skurdy at hotmail.com. And stay tuned for the next episode.